The purpose of making Wave 1 Gold was really to produce a little more minimal shape in the body of the canal. We wanted to have a shape that could still be irrigated for disinfection purposes and it would allow us to use different obturation methods for filling root canal systems, but we didn't need to have as, as full a shape in the body. The Wave 1 Gold family of instruments can address a wider range of anatomical cases, which is very useful for general dentists when they're treating the whole range of teeth uh, with emphasis on the maxillary anteriors, which have bigger, wider systems. The performance need to be improved, and we could do that as we'll look at through the design and the metallurgy. And then finally, I want to remind everybody that when we say single file, it's a single file technique in perhaps around 85% of the cases, but in about 15 to 20% of the cases, you might have to select one more file. But mainly, it's dominantly a single file, which means it's a single use file because a file that does a lot of work, one single instrument in a molar, for example, that might have three or four canals, we should expect that its blades are probably dulling along the exercise of shaping. And that means that if you try to use it on another tooth, on another patient, you're not going to have the same performance. So it is really a single file, single use method. So let's look a little bit how we can take a single shaping file and we can take a glide path, in other words, a canal that's been secured and expanded up to a size 15 hand file or a gold glider was my preference. And we can take that to a final shape with one single instrument. We can do this because of the design, the metallurgy and its unique movement. Let's look at the design. The instrument basically has along its active portion only a fixed taper in the first three millimeters. Then we have decreasing percentage tapers over the rest of the active portion, 6543, and that keeps our preparation a little smaller and it keeps it away from external root concavities, for example, like focal danger. Speaking of furcal danger, when we look at virtually any posterior tooth, we can see fluting and concavities. And because the canals coronally bend abruptly into the pulp chamber, the canals are closer to the furcal side wall. And we can see that in this cross section. Again, if you look on the right, look at the orifice level, you can see how the canal is positioned a little closer to the furcal side wall because of the way the canal bends coronally into the pulp chamber itself. So this technique that shows a centered preparation on the left, you might ask yourself how that occurs, start saying brushing. We're going to brush with this instrument and we are going to intentionally remove coronal interferences, uh, triangles of dentin, and we can brush to relocate the canal towards the greatest bulk of dentin, and that's the outer wall. So final preparations have been shown repeatedly to be more centered in the roots, and that produces roots that are strong and less predisposed to vertical fracture. Now, a lot of people like to talk about minimally invasive endodontics and how small the preparations can actually be. I think one of the most important things we should all have greater uh, appreciation for is the question could beg, what part of the active portion actually goes below the orifice in the vo virtually all the teeth. And if you think about roots being divided into coronal, middle, and apical one-thirds, then roots are about three to five millimeters in each third. So actually only about nine to 12 millimeters of a file usually progresses below the orifice. And at that level, the Wave 1 Gold file is a very modest 85 hundredths of a millimeter and one millimeter. That's pretty conservative, but yet still allows us to have active irrigation methods and able to fill root canal systems. Let's look a little bit more at the design. You know, when you build files with a group, a team of co-designers, doctors, endodontists specifically, we also need a lot of help from engineers, and I'd like to acknowledge Gilbert Rota, the chief engineer at 
uh, Densply Serona in Blake, Switzerland at the factory, it was his idea to consider an alternating offset machining method. And you can see the dashed lines going across the schematic, but those are representing one millimeter. So basically what we're saying is at every other millimeter, the file has two or one points of contact. You can notice that the cross section is different than the old Wave 1. It's an 85 degree parallelogram, but what that means is there's two points of contact, and then if we move up the file one millimeter, there's one point of contact, and then two, and then one. The two points of contact keep the file centered in the root, but in between the two points of contact, alternately, we have one point of contact. Notice the chip space that's available for debris and how that debris will not be so likely to be compacted in the blades and then in, in between the blades and the canal wall itself. This allows the debris to auger more effectively and it allows the instrument to more efficiently crawl through anatomy and curvature and achieve length. What about the metallurgy? Well, just like we talked about the gold glider, which completed the Wave 1 Gold system. Now we have a gold metallurgy heat treatment on the shaping files themselves. And again, it's a proprietary temperature. The instruments are heated up, then allowed to cool down. And what is the benefit is the flexibility. That's a staggering 80%. And the resistance to cyclic fatigue in this case is 50% more than its predecessor. And then finally, this was an unexpected, it's almost by serendipity, we didn't expect less shaping time, but that was the outcome. So the less shaping time is related to an improved cross-section. It's related to a file that's very uh, flexible and can move through curvatures with greater ease, and that shows up to benefit patients and doctors alike. Well, the movement is exactly the same as its predecessor. We're using unequal bidirectional angles. The engaging angle is counterclockwise and 150 degrees. The disengaging angle is clockwise and it's 30 degrees. We're looking at the distal end of the file up towards the handle. Appreciate then the engaging angle is 150 while the disengaging angle is 30. And after three cutting cycles, this instrument will have turned one full circle or 360 degrees. That means the instrument is forever turning circles and that is the beauty of a file that works with unequal bidirectional angles. We have other reciprocation files in the market, but they use equal bidirectional angles, which means the debris isn't nearly as efficiently augered up and out of the canal. Well, the clinical protocol then is cut a careful access cavity. Not too big, not too small, but just right. The access cavity should be able to allow us to identify all the orifices on the pulpal floor. And once we have the access, we need to take a 10 file and work it to length with intentionality. If we have to pre-enlarge to help that instrument achieve length, that's one little idea that we've talked about over the years. You could go to an 08 or a 06, but usually pre-enlargement helps uh, the 10 file get down through the canal, and that's when we get working length. Remember, patency is critically important, and then to check the glide path by pulling the file progressively in longer strokes out of the canal to see if it can slip, slide, and glide. We can expand that pathway and get a more fully tapered pathway, as we've talked about with Gold Glider, and then the primary file is used through that tapered shape to achieve the final shape. This is pretty exciting, it's pretty simplistic, and it's allowed a lot of dentists to enjoy using mechanical instruments rather than manual instruments. Mm -hmm.